Simi Valley, that's where Phil is. Now, before the show, uh, before the uh, break, uh, he was uh, telling us about uh, how he uses a classic, Microsoft Money, to keep track of his money. In fact, Microsoft uh, Money, they released, didn't they release a, like, uh, So Long and Thanks for All the Fish version? They did. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where they said it's like the end of the line. Pop up. Yeah. The reason was, they called it Money Sunset Edition. The reason was Money used to use stuff that was built into Windows, and they turned all of those features off so that you could continue to use Money even though the servers were no longer there and all of that stuff. So that was yeah. the... So I presume you're using the Sunset version, right? I'm using something, and I panic every time I turn it on that it's going to be the last time I can turn it on. You feel like it, don't you? <laughs> all the time. So I've been using Parallel. Which is great, but it's so unstable. Now I put out Capitan on, which works great. Yeah. It's even slower, and I get a lot of error messages, and I sometimes have to reboot. And Is there a better program out there to use, or uh, is so, there a better way to use Parallels? Uh, so Parallels, there are two, actually, th I should say three virtual machine environments that run well on the Macintosh. Parallels was the very first. A company called VMware does it for all kinds of platforms. They're very well known. Their their Mac version is VMware Fusion. And uh, then there's a one that's free that is maintained by Oracle called VirtualBox. Uh, and that's at virtualbox.org. You know what you could do? Download VirtualBox just to see how it runs. Because that one doesn't cost you anything to try. Okay. And you might try. I presume that VMware offers a trial version of VMware Fusion. Do you, are you using the latest Parallels? Because they keep updating that. Yeah, they keep updating. What I don't appreciate about Parallels, unlike everybody else in, in the Mac world... <laughs> no free updates. It, uh, no no free, free updates. updates. It's, VMware it's does the same thing with Fusion. No free updates. It drives me nuts. No. But uh, you kind of have to update when you update uh, OS X because the update is generally there to support OS X. It's deep voodoo what they're doing in virtualization. There's one other way you can do this that might work better for you. And it's from Apple, believe it or not. Apple um, allows you to create a dual boot system. Um, and the software you need actually is already on your Macintosh. What you could do if you have... But you need a boot disk, I mean, an install disk for Windows, I presume... You have one somewhere, mm -hmm. or you wouldn't have been you wouldn't have been able to do this in the first place. So, um, what what this program when you run it, what it does, it's called uh, what is it? Boot Manager. I can't remember. I will have to look it up because I can't. I, I use it every Boot Camp Assistant. Boot Camp, get it? Boot Camp mm -hmm. Assistant. So you run it. It's in the Utilities folder in your Applications folder, and what it does is it takes a chunk of your drive. You decide how much, and makes that a Windows machine. And as you know, for Windows, as what version of Windows you set you have there? Seven. Um, I'm using no. I'm using Windows eight. Okay, so for Windows eight, um, you probably don't need more than ten gigabytes because you're just going to put Windows eight and the money Microsoft money on there, right? You're not going to use it for right. anything else. I would try it this way because this makes the Mac be a actual Windows PC in every respect, and it will run as well as it's ever going to run under that environment. If it still doesn't run well, you're kind of out of luck. They did change in Windows 8. They, they, Microsoft has to do an update to Windows 8 to make money work, but I think they did do that. They updated a DLL that was missing. Mm -hmm. So um, what you'll do is you'll run Boot Camp Assistant. It'll divide a little, take a little chunk of your hard drive, make that Windows version, reboot the machine. You'll install Windows on it. And now when you start up the machine... You know, there's still in the control in the uh, system preference panes. There's something called startup disk. Uh, they still include it with all versions of Macs. It says which drive you want to boot when you start up with. Make it the Mac, but then the times you want to run uh, Microsoft Money, you hold the Option key down during boot, and it'll say, "Oh, you have two places you could boot. Which one you want, Mac or Windows?" So you boot into Windows. Now you're not running the Mac at all. It's a Macintosh hardware with Windows running on it. Well, wow. that will that for gaming for anything that is demanding that's going to be a that's a re, that's just the same as if you went out and you bought a Windows PC. Awesome. And if it still doesn't run under that, <laughs> get a checkbook and do it. I don't know what to tell you. 
Yeah, there are people, lots of people who use money. Remember, uh, Intuit's Quicken beat Microsoft money in the marketplace. Microsoft threw in the towel and gave up on money. Uh, right. but that, but, and you can still buy Quicken, which is Intuit's version. But even Intuit, I think, doesn't expect to sell many copies of this. They don't really work hard to keep that up to date. And in fact, they have an online product called Mint. I would probably take a look at that. What Mint does is it, it it's all the stuff that money no longer does. It ties into your checking account and your credit cards and all that stuff. Automatically updates all that stuff so you don't have to do any data entry at all. I think that was one of the reasons most people gave up on money and, and Quicken is all that data entry. It'll go out and do that. It'll, it, it'll, it, it gives you lots of information. It's free. It's, it's called Mint. And it's web-based. It's web -based. Completely secure, safe to use. Don't worry. Uh, I know it's a little scary because Mint asks you, well, all right, give me all your credit card information. <laughs> but they're using the back end, the same back end the credit card companies use. So you, nobody's getting information they don't already have. It's mint.com. And frankly, I think this is probably the best thing to do. The way they make money is because they know something about your financial situation, for instance, what your credit card interest rate is, periodically, not it's not annoying. Every once in a while, they'll say, you know, you could save money if you got this low-rate credit card, that kind of thing. Mint also works on mobile. And I'm not sure what you use money for. I'm, I, you know, I think a lot of people used money because they wanted to check up on the bank. <laughs> Mint will not do that for you. It'll just take the bank's numbers as given. But the only way you can check up on the bank is doing all that data entry. I got tired of that after a while. So either continue to use the Mac uh, using, I would say, probably the best thing, and this is free as long as you have a copy of Windows, uh, use the Mac in um, boot camp mode. If that doesn't work, it's money and you're out of, you're out of luck. If that's the case, try Microsoft, um, I'm sorry, Intuit Mint.